you're watching Coast Life and there are so many great restaurants to get a great meal at, especially in Ocean City. And of course, we are at the Spain Wine Bar and right beside me is Peter Elias, the owner. So Peter, tell me about this place. We have a great mission statement. Tell us how this all began, basically. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we're super excited to have you guys. Uh, Spain Wine Bar in Ocean City was an accident. It was unintentional originally. Um, I had uh, been out here to help some friends with a concept and an idea. And then three months later, I found myself here creating that concept and idea. Uh, so it's been exciting. It's new and it's different. I did have a lot of pushback early on because the concept was different and it was unorthodox for Ocean City. Uh, but since then, it's actually people have taken us, you know, and uh, accepted who we are and, and love us and we're excited to, and we love them right back. So. so what kind of made you so passionate? You said it was kind of something that came out the blue. What made you kind of stick with it? Well, first of all, the concept was based on the sunset. First, where it was intentionally to be uh, as all over the world, whether you're Spain, Italy, or Greece, you know, you look out west and you'll see, you know, thousands of people sitting on a rock with a bottle of wine enjoying the sunset. And I felt that that energy belonged here as well, too, because of the beautiful views. Uh, the reason I decided to make it Spanish and not in another type of wine bar was because the energy is amazing. You see there's our neighbors, there's some great bars next to us and across the street from us in restaurants. There's the marina, there's the ocean. So there's a lot of energy that sit around here. And if you know anything about the Spanish culture, there's a ton of energy in Spanish concepts. Um, high energy, big music, uh, great foods, very bold flavors, simple ingredients. Um, another factor is the kitchen is super small, so the concept allows for the tapas not to be coursed, right? So when things are done, whether they're off the saute, the fry, the oven, we're running them out. There's no heaters in the kitchen to keep food hot. We run them right out to the tables, right off to come off the grill. So that was a very, very important piece to creating this concept. So you seem really passionate about it. Are, does this have to do with like how you grew up or your background? The reason I'm in the industry in general has a lot to do with my upbringing, especially in my mother's home, my parents' home. My mother was a very big influence for me. Um, I remember growing up, like, uh, you know, my mom would drive two hours to the farm to, you know, gather, you know, produce and, um, and dairy. She would drive another 45 minutes to go to the butcher to get our meats and our seafood from them. And I didn't understand it. I was like, Mom, there's a Kroger down the street. Why don't you just grab something there? And she's like, Pete, you don't know anything about food. There's processed foods that can cause cancer. There's ingredients that aren't right. And I thought my mom was just delusional and like thinking the world was coming after us because this was back in the 80s before we had any talks about organic foods and, and good foods. And I've essentially become my mother, you know, and I'm super protective on what we carry. Um, we have some, you know, great quality purveyors that are in house. We do organic where we can um, with a lot of our food items. We open six days a week on Mondays. The reason we don't even open Mondays is because we can't get deliveries on Sundays. And so it doesn't make it fresh. Um, the other part of my journey to be in this industry was to have a calling of something greater than serving people food and beverages, you know, and just making money. The greater calling to me was, and this was through my last like seven years of my life and my journey, was to kind of like, what am I, what kind of role am I going to play on this planet? What am I going to do for others? Um, because I think in the end of the day, like serving is a great blessing to have. And so we, you know, after seven years of really thinking about it, you know, focused on love, you know, and, and having a true love and, and understanding where that comes from and what that means and having God involved in that too. So we talk about God's grace, uh, we talk about through service, and when we talk about God's grace through service, in training we actually talk about what that means. How do we relay that love to others? How do we relay that through service? How do we relay that through prep? How do we relay that through cooking our foods? Um, when things happen, and they always do, how do we give service and relay that love through recovery of something that went wrong? So everything that we do is really based on love and what God's, and God's grace and really just serving others. So how do you feel like your mission really, really makes your service so great? Do you realize like some of the customers kind of tell you guys apart because of what you believe in? That's what they say. You know, it's, it's all, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding as they say, you know, and a lot of the feedback from our guests is overwhelming you know it's very kind they highlight our staff exception they'll say hey pete the food is great the vibe is cool the cocktails are amazing but let me tell you about this server 
or let me tell you about that. And at times they might not even mention the view, which is exceptional. I don't know if there's a better view in Ocean City, to be honest with you, uh, from the inlet to the ocean, to the Assateague Island, to having the bay, watching dolphins swim an hour before sunset. It's crazy, right? But at the end of the day, they don't highlight that. They highlight our service. Um, and of course they complement everything else. So that's been a huge, huge blessing. And I think it's just being genuine. You know, we focus on people. You know, if, if you're not focusing on people and you're focusing on your numbers and you're focusing on other things, then you're not gonna be as genuine as possible because you're concerned about a loss. And there's one day when guests were upset and they walked out of the restaurant and the manager chased them down, letting them know the table was available. And they ended up going to our next door neighbor to go and have dinner there because they were tired of waiting and, and deservedly so, all that. He followed them over there and paid for their tap, you know, without them knowing. And the fact is when you chase people and you're serving others, it's like, okay, yeah, we, not only did we lose the opportunity to serve them, right? But we lost the potential, you know, we, we didn't show and express who we really are. So we chased them down and had them make sure that they enjoyed their dinner where they were, which wasn't on site, which is pretty awesome. And so those are like typical standards that we have here at Spain. You know, and that's what my expectations are. We do a lot of traditional dishes from Spain, like the patatas bravas, you know, which is seen all over Spain. Uh, the potato tortilla dish, which is traditionally made all over Spain. We talk about the gambas al uh, ajilio, which is shrimp immersed in extra virgin olive oil with cracked chili peppers and roasted garlic. So there's a lot of options that are there um, as far as dishes are concerned. Of course, we're known for our paella dishes. The paella dishes take 35 minutes, they're made from scratch. Uh, we do intentionally burn the bottom of that paella, that's called socorat. That's where the flavors get trapped um, in there and then we scrape that table side for them. So are we able to go try some now? I'm gonna have Chef fire them up and we can definitely absolutely do that. Alrighty guys. This segment of Coast Life was brought to you by Ocean City Tourism. <laughs> All right, so did your mom have any influences on any of these dishes here? No. 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 Okay. This All is, right. uh, no. Mom, no. Uh, this has everything to do with the Spanish culture. Uh, Chef Oscar and myself have been working together uh, for years with this concept. It's a very fun, small sharing type concept that does bring the family feeling of taking a dish and passing it around. And nice. So which one would you try first? Jeez. Um, well, I would say the Batatas Bravas. Okay. Uh, Batatas Bravas are a staple in Spain. You'll see garlic aioli with, with tomato sauce and of course the microgreens drizzled on top with the pinchos placed in them. Um, and then tap into the veggies, probably the, the street corn, but um, which here you have microgreens sitting with the goat cheese, of course with a lime cilantro aioli that's based on there. And if you see the little sprinkles, those are, it's called pimenton. You have the pincho stick if you want. Yeah, you okay. grab it with your fries or with your fork, sorry. Nice. And yeah. you can try that. And this is the potatoes bravas. They're sure here. Are those potatoes? I don't speak Spanish, <laughs> but are those potatoes? That's a good taste. Yeah, those are those are our potatoes that we source locally. Uh, nice. And then we have a lot of the Spanish, you know, ingredients that we actually import through a specific vendor that we use here in house. These are beef empanadas. They're seasoned empanadas. Think of the meat created like a bolognese, very okay. similar to tomato sauce inside. We do make that dough in house. So that's gonna be a flaky bread dough that's made in house. Here we have our chorizo mussels made in a red sauce. So here's a tomato based sauce with chorizo. Because we're a scratch kitchen, you know, if somebody has uh, doesn't do chorizo, that's okay. We could remove that from the dish as well. Of course, you have grilled ciabatta that goes right on top there. Can I can I try both of them? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, when we grow up, and just like your mom's house, I'm sure you know she didn't have a lot of the machinery and a lot of the things to make it commercialized. So everything is done by hand. Um, it takes a lot of work, and it takes seconds to eat it. So that's mm -hmm. always the hardest part with these dishes. Is like even sometimes if I'm hungry and I'm desiring it, I don't order it because I want somebody else to order it because I know right. that there's so much going on with that dish. And it tastes like a big, like a big ravioli. Like I remember back in the day, we always ate ravioli, yeah. but it's like, I don't know, it has like a different feel to it. It's really good. Um, yeah, I want you to try the street corn Perfect. as well too. Here you go. All right. And you can grab a stick. Okay. And just put it right on your plate and take a, you know, bite there. Enjoy that. And you just eat it just like this? Just eat it just like that. Nice.
Oh my gosh. It kind of tastes like candy, but you know it's corn, but it tastes so good. <laughs> I don't eat these often, so I'm kind of excited. If you want it, you can put the fork through the muscle and remove it that way, make your life easier, and then grab the sauce that's there. That way you can get a nice combination. Ooh. There you go. Mm. What do you think? I think it's good. I love the flavor. Mm -hmm. And that bread is great for dipping in the sauce as well, too. Really, really one of my favorite dishes. Nice. I want you to try one of our newest dishes, by the way. All right, I'm excited. Our rainbow trouts. And that's an ahi maria sauce that's drizzled. So you're going to have heat and sweetness at the same time coming from that. Mm. What do you think of that flavor? That's delicious. Like, I actually mean that. That is really good. And they're also different. They're also different. So what you're seeing here is a rice-based dish. You'll notice the ends are black. That's your sokora. That's the burn marks. You want that. That If you don't have it, you haven't gotten the right paella. You want to make sure you have that. The reason we have, again, that sokora is for two reasons. You enhance the flavor. Okay right? And you get texture, you get the crunch. So the sofrito and the broth that gets trapped in there create that socorro. And so a lot of times you'll see the, the servers and you'll see here you have New York strip, chorizo, chickpea, chicken. The white spots you see here is a garlic aioli that we always serve with our, our vegetarian and our meat paella. This is our meat paella. And of course you have New York strip layering on the outside on the top there that we grill. Uh, it's a really complicated process. We can do upwards of 200 to 250 a day wow. in paellas. It's that kind of, and it's, <laughs> we don't have that big of a kitchen. So it's a little miracle that the fact that works. And what we do here is when we come table side, we grab this handle because it's super hot, it comes right out of the oven. So it's super hot. And then we take this spoon and we literally want to remove the burn marks. You can see right there that you have some burn marks sitting underneath wow. it. Let's see a little. And you can hear the crunch as like you scoop it. Yeah, so you want to, what you want to do is you want to create the great experience. You want to, you want to make sure you pull everything off. And usually the, the ends are really what gets stuck first. So you kind of go around here and then you kind of go inward. Is it something that people like order often? It is. This is one of the most selling dishes that we have um, in Spain right now. It's, it's a great, fantastic dish. A lot of times I tell people about this concept or about ordering the paella, the time frame. So if they're interested, they can order it up front when they come in house. Mm -hmm. And then, cause again, these dishes come out quick. So when you first order your first round, we're firing this dish right away. So that way we can minimize the wait time for guests when they come in. That has a lot of flavor. Like that I knew it already was going to, but once you actually put it in your mouth, it's just different textures, different colors. It, it's great. It's one of my favorite dishes. Mm. I'm so happy you're enjoying it. I am. <laughs> There's a lot of food for you to eat here now and to try it, so. So, like you said before, just want to reiterate, your um, your menu changes constantly. Yes, it does. It changes daily. Our menu changes daily based on uh, the vegetables, the seasons. It also changes in the sense of um, what ingredients that we can get fresh, you know, daily. So we print the menu one hour before we open up. So we're literally waiting to see which fish is coming in house. We're waiting to see which vegetables we're gonna get. You know, we may find something that comes here that we don't like, but we're not taking it. So we're gonna return that and wait till we get the right vegetables in house. So that's that's what we do every single day. I've only been here for like a couple hours, but I know I definitely had a great experience. So thank you so much, Peter, for having this interview with thank us. You. I'm gonna finish off some food, guys, but there's more Coast Life after the break. This segment of Coast Life was brought to you by Ocean City Tourism.